If you're looking to support the Locks and Load YouTube channel, I would like for you guys to go to locksandloadfirearms.com and support the channel that way by purchasing a t-shirt or one of the other merches on there. If you're looking to support the Wagunda Nation uh, store, go to wagundanation.net and pick up a patch, a hat, or a t-shirt again from one of our Teespring stores on the site. If you're looking to get firearm instruction for me, locksandloadfirearminstruction.com. If you also want to know about certain things before you buy it, um, Box and Load Consultation Service on that same website will get you right. If you also want to support the Locks and Load Firearm channel, go to Patreon, become a member. A dollar gets you in, five dollars gets you more access, ten dollars gets you all that, plus help support the channel. So, guys, get in there, rock it out. Locks and Load out. What up, guys? Locks and Load Firearm Views here today. Today, guys, I was doing my research on the internet, like just going down rabbit holes. And I found a rabbit hole that I have not heard of this man before and I wanted to know why. And then doing a little bit of research, you know, this is somebody, especially black gun owners, we should know about. And so I want to take the time out today to make a quick video on Mr. C.O. Chin. All right, Mr. Chin is a relatively unheard of civil rights hero. And I wanted to know why. Why do we hear about MLK, Martin Luther King, Carmel Stokely, Robert F. Williams, but we haven't heard of C.O. Chin. And so today, I want to take that time out to make Mr. C.O. Chin's history known to the world. All right, so we're going to start this off back in the 1960s when the Civil Rights Movement was really starting to kick off and gain some momentum. This is Kent, Mississippi, and when... The Corps project director, Mr. Dave Dennis, had gone down there to start his project and he had ran into Mr. Chin. All right, so let's start off with when they had met, because I'm using two sources of information. One is from sncdigital.org, and the second one is zen, like Z I N E D project.org. It's a Zen education project. All right. So this is again back in the 1960s when Mr. Dave Dennis, the project director for CORE, Congress of Racial Equality, he had gone down to Canton, Mississippi and came in contact with Mr. Chin. So I'll read from the article. All right, it was not long after CORE's Mississippi project director, Dave Dennis, arrived in Canton, Mississippi that he came in contact with C.O. Chin. A tall, dark, and muscular man in his early 40s. Mr. Chin was sitting in the back of his truck with a shotgun and a pistol by his side. Mr. Chin, uh, Mr. Dennis had introduced himself as CORE's project director and their nonviolent philosophy. Mr. Chin, calmly sitting on his truck, listened to Mr. Dave Dennis's story, then told him, This is my town. These are my people. I'm here to protect my people. And even if you don't like this, I'm not going anywhere. And that was the first introduction to the man called C.O. Chin. All right, so who was Mr. C.O. Chin? Mr. Chin was a representative of the tough older generation of men within the Mississippi area who were determined to protect these organizers by any means necessary. He was a successful businessman and entrepreneur. He owned a 152 acre farm he had a bootlegging operation, he had a rhythm and blues club, and had a large collection of pistols, shotguns, and rifles. Everyone in the county, including the town sheriff, knew that this black man was somebody you did not fuck with. The sheriff had even said, there are only two bad sons of bitches in this county, me and that nigger Chin. All right, so Mr. Chin had definitely earned his reputation as a dangerous Negro in Canton, Mississippi. And this didn't just start in the 60s. Mr. Chin had proven his reputation, or like we say, like to say he had gotten his stripes way back before he had entered his 40s. And one of those stories had happened when he was, a, he was a child and his family, the small independent farmers in rural Mississippi, one day a white farmer had approached Mr. Chin's mother and demanded that she work for a white man. So when Mr. Chin heard that his mother had been threatened, what did he do? He ran up in the house, got his 38 revolver, 
confronted that guy and told him to stay the fuck out of our business. And that was that, right? And so definitely that type of energy would lead to Mr. Chin becoming the core's protector back throughout the 60s, right? But like I had said in the beginning when Mr. Dave Dennis and Mr. Chin at first met, the core Congress for Racial Equality was a non-violent organization, but Mr. Chin didn't believe in that non-violence. He was prepared for violence, right? If they're non-violent, I'll be non-violent. If you're violent, I'll be violent right back to you. And so that didn't necessarily sit right with this non-violent organization. So one day when they're having a meeting at a local church, Mr. George Raymond, another project director for CORE, uh, had an issue with Mr. Chin being outside their meetings all day or night or however long the meeting was with his, with his firearms. So Mr. George Raymond had pulled Mr. Dave Dennis to the side and had a talk. Whenever we had a meet, have a meeting, CEO Chin sits outside with his guns. He won't leave. He says he's here to protect his people. Can you talk to him? So Mr. Dennis goes outside and has a chat with Mr. Chin, which is what we first heard of where he says, I'm not leaving. These are my people. I'm here to protect them. Maybe you should leave. Right. So after he had said that and he sees this older, obviously not dealing with the bullshit type of person with a shotgun and a pistol right next to him. Mr. Dave Dennis said, yes, sir, shook his hand and went right back inside the church to finish out their business. So it's things like that that helps definitely build up this reputation of Mr. Chin being a badass, not just a soft badass, but a real hard badass in the time where black people stepped out like that, they didn't last long or things things went, went really, really wrong for them if they stepped out and had been a figure like Mr. Chin. But he was not scared about that and he was not stepping down for anything. So throughout the 60s, Mr. Chin and his people have provided unwavering protection and support for these local freedom fighters. Um, whether they went to a meeting or whether they were out having a demonstration, there was never a time to where Mr. Chin did not have somebody assigned or there to protect those organizers. Everywhere they went, they had protection, armed protection. And so... All this stuff didn't go without, you know, a sacrifice. You know, you step out like that, you're surely going to get attacked. And that's what happened to him. Um, he lost his businesses. He lost nearly all his property. But he continued to campaign for the right to vote and to speak out at meetings and to be part, basically, for black people to be the American citizens as what the Constitution says. So even throughout those, those sacrifices, he was still there fighting for our people and never once backed down or took a step back. And so his son remembers his father. He says, he was raised to believe that you're supposed to work hard, treat everybody right, respect everybody, but take no mess off nobody, regardless of color. And so today we wanna to give a huge thank you to Mr. C.O. Chin for being that positive representation of black gun owners, black men, black empowerment, wherever you wanna call it, for being that man to set an example for us younger generations to follow. And so, again, his story is not widely told, but here on Locks Low Firearms and here in Wagunda, Mr. C.O. Chin, you will be remembered. So again, guys, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Um, remember, get training. Don't, don't forget your history. You, even if we have to go out and do what I did, sit here on a computer and look for it, it's out there. It might not be widely told. And the more black people that, that do what I do, that go out and find these stories, these untold stories, and get them told, the better it is for us and the generations that come after us. So, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, you learned a little bit in this video. On top of that, stay dangerous. Locks load out. Oh